Hello. Hello. Well, looks like there might be folks. Let's see. Um, yeah, there are a couple of people in the uh, <clears throat> who are attendees, but um, none of the other panelists have arrived. And um, just so that you're aware, like the meeting is being recorded. So it's automatically set to record. Hello. Hello. Hi, Allegra. Hello. Um, so I might be the only committee member here tonight. Um, <laughs> so uh Deborah and I talked briefly because she was stuck at her conference and I thought I would probably just do some announcements about upcoming events because I know DEI has some stuff going on and see if anyone wants to make public comment and then call it <laughs> okay it's, it's so yeah i um i you do have um three attendees so there might be an um and someone who might want to make a public comment i know that uh jennifer had told me that um lisette and everald were not able to to make it yeah, and then last minute we got a note from Isabella as well, and then Deborah okay, saying I thought I was going to make it back from my conference, but I'm not. All um, right. So I don't know. I mean, I guess we can do the official recording thing. Just yeah. So we're sure. we're recording. Yeah, we're recording now. I generally um automatically set the meetings to record to the cloud automatically. Otherwise, okay. I might forget. Um, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Do I still have to read the official thing, even though we're technically not a meeting? <laughs> if well, we don't... I, yeah, I um, yeah. I think I, I I would just I can do an, a revised version of it just so that for the recording purposes. So um, I can do that if you like. I have it right in front of me. So um, uh, the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee was scheduled to meet tonight, Wednesday, January tenth, uh, uh, by a remote means, which they were. Would have been authorized to do through an extension of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 
Um, however, since there um, is no quorum present, we will not have an official meeting, but we'll uh, open the floor for announcements and public comment. Thank you. Um, so there are two upcoming events next week um, as part of MLK and National Racial Healing Day. Um, but let me know if I get the details wrong, but the, the MLK Day event is at the Bang Center at 1 p.m. and there will be a reading of one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches. Um, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's a nice event. They, there's a reading, everybody takes turns reading, and then there's a discussion of the event or of this content afterwards. Um, and then the on on Tuesday, uh, the National Day of Racial Healing is an, uh, um, an event that's now in its seventh year, sponsored by the Kellogg Foundation. Uh, the event um, is open to all community members. It's an opportunity for community members to come and share personal narratives, stories about race and racial healing. Um, that the those uh, stories will be done in small groups and will be facilitated by community members and members from town staff. And the event takes place at Crocker Farm at, I believe, starting at 6 p.m. Um, and then Thursday night, Deborah Ferreira and I are going to speak with the League of Women Voters as part of the Judy Brooks Lecture Series. So that is virtually from seven to eight their website uh, should have the information about the Zoom and everything like that, but it's League of Women Voters Amherst. Um, and we're gonna present a little bit about CSSJC and CRESS and the other recommendations of the CSWG. Um, so that and is I, again next I, I was gonna say the um, final two things that I would mention um, are that the uh, public forums for the resident oversight committee are taking place. Actually, one is taking place uh, virtually as we speak. Mm -hmm. And then there are two more events scheduled, one for January 18th and the second one for January 21st. Um, just trying to think if there was anything else. There's something in my brain and it's not wanting to come out. Um, when is the Lunar New Year celebration? Is that so? Um, a, that date it will be in February, and it hasn't been finalized yet. I think tentatively we're looking at February seventeenth, but um, I'm not sure that that's um, set in stone yet. Oh, thank you. I just wasn't sure if it was before or after our next meeting. Yeah. Um. So another update in terms of the committee is. That. I'm sorry, my dog is um, playful. Um, uh, Dr. Freke Ete has given his resignation. So we do, um, he started his term as a town counselor. So we do have an additional vacancy on our committee as of right now. Um, so if anybody watching knows anybody interested in the committee work, it would be wonderful to have applications for new members. Um, and that's through the, you can go to the CSSJC online and there should be a link to the committee, community activity form that you have to fill out. Um, but we are, we are still able to maintain a quorum, just we weren't able to reach it tonight, which is why we are abbreviating our meeting. Um, so I can't think of any other announcements at this time. Um, I guess, we, um, Lisette and I were at the Multilingual Parents Advisory Committee meeting for through the schools last, I think it was just, it was like the week before Christmas break, I think. Um, and so there were a few people that attended that. So we gave a little presentation and had a discussion with some of the families um, and learned a little bit about what they do in the schools and some of the events that they're hoping to put on in the springtime. Um, and they have invited us to potentially come back and, and chat because I do think that could be a good resource for DEI and for Crest to have as you know 
reaching out into other communities that might not be the traditional communities that the town has reached out to in the past. Um, so there are four attendees. Um, I would like to extend the opportunity to give public comment to anybody who would like to give public comment. Um, I have to read the thing. Let's see. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address or connection to town. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The CSSJC will not engage in dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment period. So um, I um, have um, promoted one person in to, for public comment. Thank you. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Um, so here's my public comment. Um, I watched your December 13th meeting and I was disturbed and dismayed at something Tim Nelson said in the meeting in a discussion about whether it should be Amherst police or crest responders who would be sent for a noise complaint. He wondered aloud if college kids, quote, would listen to an unarmed civilian. His immediate answer was, I don't know. But the fact of the question is what bothered me questioning whether town residents would comply with the requests of an unarmed civilian implies the assumption that arms are required in order to ensure compliance. And it implies that the police rely on fear and the presence of weapons to get people to comply. It implies that police believe that it's the fact that they have guns, which is the reason people listen to them. That's a dangerous and really problematic mindset. And this leads me to believe that the police build fear while crest responders build relationships. So Tim said they were starting small by having Crest respond to only a small number of categories of calls. And then he heard from CSSGC members that you would like to see this broadened to include noise complaints. And Tim then said they would need to look at the data and see how these calls play out. So I wanted to urge the CSSJC to request or insist or demand that the Crest interim leadership establish goals and metrics now on what it would take for them to feel comfortable having Crest res respond to noise complaints. And if those goals and metrics are achieved in a specific time frame, to go ahead and make that change. Because I feel like if goals and metrics are not established ahead of time, then I fear we'll continue to hear the platitudes and generalities about noise complaints instead of the actual change that CSSJC members have asked for. So I understand you're not having a full meeting tonight and you have many members missing. So I might just attend your next meeting and give the same comment just so that other committee members can hear it. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. And if you have anything written, you know, if that was from your brain, that was beautiful. And if you have it written down, you can always forward it along. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let me just see if there are any other hands raised. I do not see any other hands raised at this time. I'll give it a minute or two. Um, while I am just percolating on that for a second. Um, Pamela, I know we had asked for some information. I don't know if there's any anything that you had prepared for tonight or anything that you think would answer some of the questions last. And I can't remember off the top of my head. I think there was some data questions that we'd asked about. So I don't know if that was something that you had um, had. I don't. So the um, the responders are just in week three of uh, of being on dispatch. So we don't have a lot of data to present at this point. Um. All right. Um, I do see somebody else just joined. Just for the members of the public, we do not have a quorum for our meeting tonight. Um, I am the only committee member who was able to make it due to various emergencies that have come up. So. We were allowing a period of public comment. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns you want to raise, you can raise your hand and we'll call on you. Otherwise, let me look at our calendar. Our next meeting will be on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. Um, I can send a poll to people if 
they think that that's not going to work. Um, I don't have any plans in the foreseeable future, but that doesn't mean other people don't. So I can, I can set up, I can send out an email and just see, you know, get the pulse of people. And if we need to decide on a different date that week or a following date, um, I see Michael has his hand up. If we can right. Pull. And I, um, I made an effort to promote um, him to a panelist, but it was declined, but I'll try again. Okay. Hi, this is Michael Husson. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. I may not be visible. Oh, I am. Um, I, I didn't decline being a panelist. Just It was mostly out of modesty and shyness, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know quite what that meant my responsibilities were. But anyway, um, I, I hear that you do not have a quorum, so I'm wondering, uh, I just have informational questions, and is it possible to ask them? Uh, mostly yes. of Pamela without a without a quorum. Uh, so I, I would say ask away, and if I can answer, if I have the answer, I'm happy to share. It's uh, generally that um, prohibition is for uh, members of the uh, commission who are not allowed to res to right. um, respond. Yeah, great. And I missed the first few minutes, so I don't know if you covered any of this already. It doesn't sound like you have covered. I just was wondering a couple of things like um, how the executive director search is going on, uh, the search for the new Crest members, uh, and if there have been any hires. Uh, and I think you already answered how dispatch is working. It's too soon to tell. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, so there were those questions. And then I just wanted to see if there was some information I read in the paper about a visit to North Carolina's Heart program, I think it was called. Okay. So, um, the I well, I'll take them in in turn. So, the crest responder search has been completed and offers have been extended, um, and so we anticipate that we'll have um, three new folks joining the department um, very soon. I am, am not a member of the search committee for the director search, but I am aware that they have started their interviewing process. Um, and, um, but I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think they've completed interviewing all of their first round applicants. So I think they're in the midst of, midst of that, um, of that search. And then the final, um, question was about a trip to North Carolina. Yeah. I read that there were some members who were going down to a, a similar program. That made okay. So the, um, the Crest department, uh, applied for and received, um, a small additional grant from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. And that grant will fund um, three trips so that the new director and uh, responders um, can travel to, uh, to do site visits at um, sites that are fully operational on dispatch. So it will be an opportunity for them to learn firsthand from the, from the other organizations. So that's terrific. So when there is a new director, the new director would go on one of these trips with some responders. Right. And it would be like three different sites or three, just... there are three different sites that, that, that have um, programs that are similar to the, the program in Amherst. So uh -huh. um, I believe that it's uh, Raleigh Durham. Um, I, the other one is the CAHOOTS program, which I want to say is Denver. in Washington. Oregon, but I, Washington Oregon yeah. Um, Oregon, right. And then I can't think of, of the third site. Uh, but I, I I think that the um, the plan will be that those trips will not begin until a new director is appointed. Sure. So. That's really excellent. Um, I guess that's it. Maybe this was asked once before. Is it a policy of the town or the department or anybody to do, I know I was on the school committee for many years and I think it was always just sort of voluntary, but exit interviews, I know that might've been discussed before. Um, 
So it's the HR generally handles exit interviews with yeah. individuals. I think they extend an invitation. It's um, and some folks yeah. choose to, and you know, some do not. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. Well, thank you. That's, uh, that's all I've got for questions, informational questions. Is there a likelihood you're going to get a quorum tonight, Allegra? No. Oh, no. it's me. <laughs> so I think we were just going to have, you know, we made some brief announcements and we were allowing for public comment and then I think that will round out the evening. Yeah. Um, um Let's see if I have anything else here. Um, Pamela, were you involved at all in picking these sites or how, how were they picked just out of curiosity? So the sites were chosen um, based on their similarity to the program here. So in each of those sites, um, the, um, the responders are part of public safety. So in, in some communities, responders are part of like mental health or the public health. And these sites, they're part of public safety. So that's the what that was the rationale for the choosing those locations to go to places that are um that are doing the work similarly to the way that it's supposed to be done in, in Amherst. Right. It makes sense. I've been in touch with some of the folks over in Northampton uh, and uh, I know they're under the um Department of Public Health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of similarities in terms right. of what stage they're at and uh, numbers of responders and so forth. I would just comment that it's really interesting to be talking to the folks in Northampton because they're in a very similar place in some ways in terms of how far they are along with dispatch they may not even be as far along as we are with dispatch. And um, um, they have the same number of responders. Um, they had one responder leave, they're looking for another one. Um, and uh, uh, what was the other similarity? You know, they're also not not with dispatch much yet. You know, they're and they're not doing disorderly conduct or, or um, noise complaints either yet. You know, so they're all similar to where Amherst is at, which I thought was interesting and maybe helpful and maybe helpful to know that we're not out of line. Uh, you're not out of line. I say we, but <laughs> I'm not a we with you as well. So uh, just to pass that on, I thought was instructive. I mean, it is different, but um, there's some similarities. Thank you for sharing. So I think I'm going to tentatively say our next meeting will be scheduled for February 14th at 630, pending confirmation from other committee members that they would be able to make it. Perhaps I could suggest the week before, which is February 7th as an alternative date. Um, a, it's a week earlier since we missed a meeting tonight and B, the 14th would be like in the week before vacation week. And sometimes that might get hectic for people. So I would I would offer those two dates as. So I'll, um... so Jennifer and I will send out an email tomorrow and see if we can get a response for a quorum on the 7th. Yeah. That would be great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that said, um, I guess we will bid everyone adieu. Yes, it's 6.52 and we are adjourned. <laughs> yes. Have a great night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.